American Crime Story. And it is uh, the, of course, uh, revolving around the whole Clinton, uh, Monica Lewinsky uh, story. And uh, it is told brilliantly. And uh, one person very responsible for that. She developed it for television. She wrote most of the scripts. She is nominated for an Emmy for Outstanding Writing in a Limited Series. That would be Sarah Burgess. Hi. Hi, Pete. Thank you for saying that. And you all know the other Sarah I'm about to introduce. Uh, she's an Emmy winner, multiple nominee, movie star, television star. They, she does it all. Uh, <laughs> plays Linda Tripp. And man, does she. Uh, this is Sarah Paulson, nominated for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Limited Series or Movie. Thank Hi. You. Hi. So I have to ask you, Sarah Paulson, yeah. taking on this role. Uh, and I, I should say that uh, three other nominations for the show went to the makeup and uh, hairstylist who uh, are responsible largely for that look created there that you, you work closely with them. But why did you want to take on Linda Tripp? She's such a fascinating person, but what was, what was it that made you say yes? Well, um, and this is, I'm not saying this simply because she's um, on the line here with us, but the script was one of the greatest things I'd ever read. And I remember thinking, I, I couldn't believe what I was reading. And I, I chiefly couldn't believe that I was going to get to play the, this part of this incredibly um, colorful, fully realized on the page where it became immediately evident to me what I would need to do. I didn't know how to do it uh, at that point, but I did know what was going to be required. And I, I'm glad you said that she's a fascinating uh, character because she certainly is. And I think there was um, so many preconceived notions about her and um, widely held beliefs about Linda. And this was sort of cracking that open in a way not to kind of um, have a revisit to um, pull out all the wonderful celebratory things about Linda and her personality and her behavior, but rather to remind everybody that she was a human being. Um, and, and I thought that was just so expertly done by Sarah. And I just was like salivating, salivating to do it from an acting standpoint. <laughs> <laughs> there was so much about this, Sarah Burgess, so much uh, that we've lived through, that has been written, that has been played out. And, and you took it on and turned it into this riveting television program, um, but says a lot about women, about media, about politics, about everything. What was it about uh, this story that uh, got you involved and wanted to spend all this time, you know, making sense of it here? Um, I was really hesitant at first for the reasons that you, for, for the reasons you said, you know, I, it felt like an event that was so covered. There was almost a sort of national agreement that it was over covered in the 1990s. And then you know, Monica Lewinsky herself started a reevaluation of this. You know, she did that well before the show, you know, and sort of reemerged, I think, heroically as this um, public figure who would sort of plainly and truthfully tell her story and I think did start to change minds on her own. Um, the real, the, the most honest answer to your question, I read a couple of books. I still felt sort of nervous and unsure about retelling the story. I did become mildly to moderately obsessed with Linda Tripp when I read, especially um, Ken Gormley's Death of American Virtue. Linda to me was like the, the unanswerable question in the story. It was obvious to me this is not like a psychopath or someone who enjoyed doing this thing. I felt the presence in reading all of Linda's interviews and then even interviews late in life, like um, someone who like, I, I was so curious about where she was in her life at this time. I still didn't totally understand why she did it. And I became really creatively engaged with this sort of task of writing that and exploring that in scenes. I would have done that for free. I would have written that as like a play because I got so obsessed with it. And that, that was a few years ago. I'm still sort of, I, I will never totally be over my fixation on that experience just because I'm a weird person, but also <laughs> was so inspired by, by Sarah's performance too. You know, that it was an incredible, um, it, it was a wonderful creative gift to me and like learning experience to devote myself to a character and then to see it perform that way. Well, before we go much further, let's take a look at Sarah's performance here in impeachment. 
So there's no confusion. Acquittal for the president on both of the charges now seems assured. The first charge, perjury, seems destined not to get even a simple majority. I can't believe this. It's so fucking gross. Language. It doesn't make any sense. It was always going to end this way. You said that he was going to have to resign. Well, I got caught up in the dramatics of the whole scenario. Okay, so that's it then. The lesson here is that you should have just lied. No, that's not the lesson. You know why I never told you about my father? Because I didn't want to let my child know how completely fantastic life tends to turn out for liars. Of course, as a kid, I didn't realize what he was. I worshipped him. He was an incredibly strict man. He was sort of an avatar of moral certitude. And then one day, when I was a teenager, he announced he was walking out of our family to be with the woman he met at the school. And then I begged him to stay. I mean, it was pathetic. I offered him my room. He didn't care. He got in his car and drove away. But that wasn't the worst of it. Because after he left, the truth came out. For years, my entire life, he'd been having affairs with women all over Morris County. And everyone had known. The kids at school, all the neighbors, everyone. It was so humiliating. And my mother, she barely survived that. Why didn't anyone tell because her? Because... They liked him. They liked him more than her or me. He was a cheater. He was a liar. And nobody held it against him. That's the truth. Men like that. Men like Bill Clinton. They ruin lives. And they get away with it. They just do. Wow. <laughs> that is a powerful scene. And boy, the writing of it and the acting of it, it explains so much about Linda Tripp and where she came from. And and Sarah uh, Paulson, you mentioned humanizing her. Mm -hmm. If ever a scene did that, it's that mm -hmm. because you really do see so much about her there. Yeah, and that isn't even something that had to be invented. That was just sort of, you know, Linda's story. And so when you think about it from that perspective, both from a writing perspective, which of course I can't speak to, but from an acting perspective, given that I had that writing on the page and that it was impossible to experience anything other than feeling empathy for Linda, you know, for having a very human experience of her own family broken and the latitude given to a man capable of this kind of destruction within his home, uh, that it was sort of unsurprising to her and probably a big motivating factor, whether she was conscious of it or not, in terms of why she put this in motion in the first place, you know, trying to write some, some personal um, trauma in a way. Yeah. yeah, it's fascinating. Sarah Burgess too, you know, Monica Lewinsky, was a producer on this show too. So I'm wondering what that dynamic was going through the making of the whole thing and how helpful she was to you or how maybe trepidatious it might've been too, you know, knowing that she's there as a oh, producer on this. Yeah, trepidatious is a good word. That's my, <laughs> my default. And of course I was, um, it ended up being, of course it term at times very challenging and it was always very intense, but um, as it would be if I wrote about your life, you know, I mean, what, what is that like to have some random woman just like show up at a, like, you know, and, and write scenes about you and even the most simple events in life, you have to condense and the stories have to escalate and we experience repetition so much in our lives and that affects how we behave and all these things. Um, it was a really, in the end, um, a wonderful 
experience to get to know her. And I am so grateful to her for trusting me. And she was enormously helpful and honest with every single page that she read. I knew I could count on her to sort of give it to me straight the whole time. And she did. Yeah. Uh, for you, Sarah, uh, Paulson, did you uh, have meetings with Monica to get more insight into that relationship? You know, I did. I did meet with Monica. We had dinner sort of early on and, and we stayed in touch all throughout shooting. I was very mindful of, even though Monica never really made me feel anything other than her openness to all of it, but I felt nervous to sort of re-traumatize her by having me pick through her brain or her experience about a person who caused her real pain and, and harm. And I thought, I can't really take advantage of this relationship, very generous offering of friendship um, that she's offering me um, and sort of pick it clean. It felt, it felt dirty to me and not right. And so I didn't. Um, and, and, you know, I asked her a few things, like if she remembered what kind of cigarettes Linda smoked, I was very interested to know that she could not remember. Nobody I talked to could remember what kind of cigarette she smoked, um, <laughs> you know, or what kind of perfume she wore, all these kind of little detail things that I thought were um, harmless in terms of what they might conjure for Monica in terms of um, that. But she was, she was just, you know, she was, a, she was a wonderful, she was only an asset to me and an, an additive to the experience as a whole um, for me. Yeah. yeah. What is it like when you're, you throw yourself into completely a different persona, you're working with all of these now Emmy nominated makeup artists and hairstylists and everybody helping you to create at least part of that. Um, what was that process like for you on this one? Um, it was one of the more extraordinary things I've ever gotten to experience. I like, you know, any actor will tell you that they love looking in the mirror and seeing a completely different person. You know, sometimes you're doing a lot of mental gymnastics to try to, you know, let go of your own identity and you're constantly confronted with your own face in the mirror when you're, you know, uh, getting ready to go do your work. This, of course, to be able to find a way where I was sort of me, Sarah was sort of hidden. Um, you know, we did make the choice to not wear contacts, which I think was scary to me at first because Linda had really, really beautiful big blue eyes um, and they were absolutely defining characteristic of her face. But I was so afraid that with all the other accoutrement, <laughs> the hair and the nose and the neck that I was going to be lost in a way, meaning as an actor, I know for me, what I'm always looking at and some, when I'm watching someone's performance is their eyes. And I thought if I can't get my insides out of my face at all, we're going to have a bigger problem here. So um, I, I loved the idea of sort of seemingly being hidden, but the truest part of me was right there. And and I, I've said this publicly before, I, I connect to Linda in ways that I imagine would be surprising to some people. Um, so that I wanted that the part of me that felt that connective tissue to find, have a way of of coming outside of my being and you know hopefully into the minds and hearts of the people watching would be the yeah. hope you know. Um, maybe for both of you, Sarah Burgess, uh, I I just want to know what you hoped when you embarked on this that the audience would take away from it, you know, after seeing this and thinking they know this story and that they don't really know this story. There was so much that came out of this that I certainly didn't know. And, and a lot of it was about the impact of men uh, on all of these women, not just Monica, mm -hmm. not just Linda, but Paula, all of them, mm -hmm. you know, it's yeah. very interesting. And Kath Kathleen Willey and like, I think, um, certainly what you just said, I think to see, and, and even Monica, though that story was well told to depict the sort of grinding um, hours she spent being held in the hotel room by federal prosecutors. You know, there's a sort of moral duty for a writer to write that accurately. And I felt in that mode, um, I, I really felt that I, you know, you, you take in all the information you can and you try to depict it and then hand it to an actor so that the audience can be in that character's shoes. I think that all these women are very different, you know, I mean, I think when it comes to sort of Paula and, and Monica and Kathleen Willie, you have people who were um, sort of swept up in, a, in different types of relationship relation to Bill Clinton. And I felt I wanted people to understand their humanity and all the different forces that 
brought them into the, in the into that situation. With Linda, it's trickier because I just I took for granted that my goal was not to make her like I, I wasn't trying to sell in my scripts a version of the person that didn't exist. I just wanted her to exist, and I felt very committed to all the like sort of whatever pain or sort of loneliness she may have been experiencing at a given time, which we all experience at certain moments. I was so obsessed with putting that on the page as well as Linda's funniness and her intelligence and how good she was at her job. And yet she gets annoyed at her coworkers, just like we do. <laughs> and, um, I don't know that I had an idea at the end, uh, you know, about, I, I don't tend to write from that place with that kind of character, which is like, you know, there's going to be a, um, I don't know, like, I'm going to somehow fundamentally change a perception of this person. I don't know that I can write from that place. I just took for granted that it was truthful and she is complicated. Like all people are complicated and I really loved her and that that somehow, and that means depicting her truthfully, um, which is why again, Sarah's performance, which did not sand off any of those edges. And she never asked me to sort of, which has happened to me in my career, you know, uh, an actor can sort of gently try to make you sand off those edges. It felt like a very truthful and nuanced performance, which was an exact um, elaboration of what I wrote, um, which was really inspiring to me. And you never know, you want the audience to just take that in and be affected by it, you know, and you don't know where, what, what that will do to them, but I just hope it did something, you know? Well, I think that's a wonderful, uh, uh, review of your performance. And oh, I would <laughs> second that. I wish we had more time to talk about it. We don't, but I want to thank both of you for joining us today on Contenders and wish you the best of luck at, uh, at the Emmys this year. Thank you so much. Pete. Thank you.